Okay, so we've seen how we can make crude oil more useful by separating it into its fractions. And then we learn about cracking, how we can make shorter alkanes and alkenes from longer alkanes. And I said that alkenes are useful because they can be used to make plastics. And that is with a process called polymerization. So let's talk about what that is. So let's take ethane. Ethane, we said, is a saturated hydrocarbon. Now, ethane does not have any spare bonds going to bond to anything else. That's why we say it's saturated. Ethene, on the other hand, because it has this double bond in the middle, the double bond in the middle is free to break to then bond onto something else. Last time we saw how we can test for an alkene, but this time we're going to use these and join them together into long chains called polymers. Poly means lots. And so polymer is a molecule that's made up of lots of smaller molecules. So you can use all sorts of different unsaturated hydrocarbons like ethene and join them together. But we're going to look at what happens when we join ethenes together. Now, because poly means lots, no prizes for guessing what this is in this case. This is the monomer. What does mono mean? It means one. So lots of monomers, might be ethene, might be something else. Lots of monomers get joined together to make a polymer. Okay, so what conditions do we need? Now, the conditions vary from polymer to polymer, but generally you want a high pressure because you're trying to force these monomers together. You want a fairly high temperature, but you don't want it to be too high, otherwise you're going to break the bonds that you're trying to make, and a catalyst helps as well. Okay, so what happens then if we polymerize ethene? First things first, I'm going to redraw ethene like this. I'm just going to draw the hydrogens going straight up like that. If you use the right conditions and you have lots of these available, what will happen is the double bond will break. One of these will flip around to the other side of the carbon and form a new bond. What does that bond to? Well, that bonds to another one of these. It has a spare bond going. What does that bond on to? You guessed it. Another one of these monomers and so on and so forth. And you can end up with incredibly long chain carbons, which can then be used to make plastics. This is now a polymer. Okay, at the end of the chain, you are gonna have a hydrogen at either end, but we don't need to draw the whole thing. In fact, there's a much easier way of drawing a polymer. If this is the monomer, ethene this is, all we have to do to draw the polymer is get rid of the double bond in the middle, add two more bonds coming out at the end, and draw brackets around, and put a little N there. The N just shows that it's repeated lots of times. Now, people can get very confused when it comes to drawing the polymer version of a monomer. This has come up before in a question. Instead of it being ethene, this is actually propene, but they draw it like this for you, and they've drawn it like this for you for a reason. Because if we want to draw the polymer of this, like I said, all we have to do is get rid of the double bond, draw everything else exactly the same, no changes there, add brackets, Bonds coming out and then an N on the outside, easy. Naming polymers is even easier. All we have to do is stick poly in front of the name of the monomer. So this is ethene, so this makes polyethene. Not polyethane, we stick with the name of the monomer. So it is gonna be an ene, also known as polythene. Sometimes we drop the E and this one, propene, this makes polypropene couldn't be easier. So you could have a monomer with anything bonded to the carbons, it might even be bromine, it might be a halogen, but just remember, we keep everything the same apart from those two things. Single bond in the middle, brackets, bonds coming out, and N. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, make sure you leave a like. I'll see you next time.